Hi guys. So today we are going to be reading the second part of The Mask of the Red Death. Uh, and we are actively reading still. So you will need to have both this video and um, your Kami uh, article of the story up. So go ahead and pull that up and you can either split screen or go back and forth. I would recommend split screen so you have half my video on half the screen and your article on the other half uh, because that'll just be easier. Uh, so let's go ahead and look at our Cami article here. Uh, so let's look at our key again as review. So for our focus questions are, where is there irony in the story and what character traits are used to describe Prospero? And Prospero is our main character. Um, he's the leader of the land. Uh, and what exactly are we doing with the story? Any important details that we have, we're highlighting in blue. Uh, any character traits or way that Prospero is described, we're using the underline tool here and we're using that in red. Um, and then we're using the comment tool over on the side to say whether it's direct or indirect characterization um, and saying exactly what the character trait is. And finally, if we find any situational irony or any irony in the story, specifically situational, uh, we highlight that pink. Okay, uh, so yesterday we were introduced to our main character, Prospero. Like I was saying, uh, he's the leader of a country that is being plagued by this terrible disease, the Red Death. Um, and it makes people, well, it, it's described right here, uh, blood is its mark, the redness and horror of blood. Um, it makes people so horrifying looking and kills them so quickly that everyone is afraid to try and help in any way. So by the time you realize you have the Red Death, uh, you have half an hour before you're dead. So it's very quick, it's got a very quick onset. So Prince Prospero uh, decides to get a thousand of his closest friends and go to one of his secluded castles out in the country. Um, and to keep themselves safe, they take the iron doors and seal them shut with fire so that no one can get in and they cannot get out. Uh, during their time in the castle or in this palace, um, Prospero decides that he wants to throw a party. Um, and he supplied everything they need for pleasure. So food and wine and music and there'd be dancing. Uh, and everyone is having what seems like a pretty good time. Uh, it goes on to describe the different... Um, the different details of the party. There are seven rooms that this party is taking place in, and all of them kind of have this different color theme going on. And we listed off the colors down here. Our first room is blue, the second is purple, the third is green, the fourth is yellow, the fifth is white, the sixth is violet, and the seventh is black with red windows. And that one sticks out from us, sticks out to us, uh, because all of the other rooms, whatever color their walls were, they had the same color, um, same color windows. So like the glass was blue in the first room um, and it would shine in blue light onto them. Now this final room kind of seems spooky and people really don't want to go in there, um, especially with it being described as a deep blood color and what we know about the Red Death, like very, very blood related, very, very creepy. Uh, the last thing that we talked about um, was the people not wanting to go into that room, which is weird. Like there's not usually a room at a party where people are like, yeah, don't, don't go in that one. That one's weird. That one's spooky. So that is where we stopped. Everyone's at a party and having what seems like a good time unless you're in the seventh room. Uh, and these colors feel like they play an important role in this story here. We'll come back to that. We're starting on page three, right? And this first body, first paragraph of the page, roll paragraph. In the room stood a great clock of black wood. Gently, it marked the seconds as they passed. And when it was time to mark an hour, the clock spoke with a loud, clear voice a deep tone as beautiful as music, but so strange that the music and the dancing stopped and the dancers stood still to listen. And then after another 60 minutes, another 3,600 seconds of time, 
flying time, the clock struck again and the dancers stopped as before. Okay, so we're again getting something that's described in great detail. I'm going to go ahead and highlight this section in blue where it's talking about the clock. Uh, and I'm going to add a text box over here on the side. I think we were writing in purple. This clock seems important. Everyone is bothered by the passing of time. Okay. Nevertheless, it was a happy and beautiful masquerade. And you made sure that the clothes and the the clothes the dancers and you may be sure that the clothes the dancers chose to wear, their costumes, were strange and wonderful. The dancers looked like the forms we might see in troubled dreams. And these, the dreams, danced softly through the rooms, taking the color of the rooms as they moved. It did not seem that their steps followed the music, but that the music rose from their steps. But into the seventh room, the dancers do not go. For the red light coming through the windows and the blackness of the wall hangings make them afraid. And he who enters hears more deeply the sound of the black clock. Okay, so we've got some more details here. So everybody's dancing. They've got these costumes on that like kind of make you think of like nightmare costumes. They're very creepy. Um, but all of these people who are dancing, again, are still avoiding that seventh room. So they mention the scary red room and the clock again. This is important. Important, question mark, question mark, question mark. I'm just doing two question marks, okay. But the other rooms are crowded, and in them beats hotly the heart of life. And the dance goes on until the last clock begins to strike 12. Again, the music stopped. Again, the dancers stood without moving while the slow striking sound continued. Before the clock was quiet again, many in the crowd saw that in the first room, the blue room, there was a masquerader who had not been seen before. As they talked softly to each other about him, a feeling of surprise spread throughout the dancers, then a feeling of sickening horror. Okay, so we've got some important details in here to highlight in blue. Um, again, they're stopping and listening to that clock sound. Everything, everything stops when the clock strikes a new hour, and right now it's midnight. And at midnight, after that clock sounds, the people at the party notice somebody that hadn't been there before. All the dancers that see this masquerader, this stranger that they hadn't seen before, have a feeling of fear and sickening horror. So I'm going to ask a question up here, like right underneath this there's a masquerader who had not been seen before. Who is this person? Oops, I still have caps lock on. We don't know. And down here, I'm gonna add a comment over here. Everyone is afraid of this party goer. Okay. In such a group as this, only a very strange masquerader could have caused such a feeling. Even among those who laugh at both life and death, some matters cannot be laughed at. Everyone seemed now deeply to feel that the stranger could not have been allowed to come amongst them dressed in such clothes. 
He was tall and very thin and covered from head to foot like a dead man prepared for the grave. The mask which covered his face, or was it really a mask? The mask which covered his face was so much like the face of a dead man that the nearest eye could not see the difference. And yet, all this might have been acceptable. But the masquerader whom nobody knew had made himself look like the Red Death himself. His clothes were spotted with blood, and the mask over his face was covered with the terrible red spots. Or perhaps it was his face indeed. Okay, so we've got, we've got some situational irony here. Go ahead and get our pink highlighter out. Everyone seemed now to deeply feel that the stranger should not have been allowed to come amongst them in such clothes. So everyone is wearing. It's wearing weird uh, costumes. But this, let me make it so you can see it. <clears throat> but this man's costume is viewed as too weird or scary. All right, so everyone's looking weird, but this guy's looking too weird. When Prospero looked upon the feature or the fearful form, he was at first filled with terror and then with anger. Who dares, he cries, take him, seize him, pull off his mask so that we may know who we must hang at sunrise. Okay, so Prospero, he's getting pretty upset. Um, well, let's go ahead and highlight this in blue. This is an important detail here. He's, he's jumping up. He's deciding, no, I'm not letting this happen. Okay. Prospero stood in the blue room when he spoke these words. They sounded through the seven rooms, loud and clear. At first, he spo er, at first, as he spoke, some of the dancers started to rush towards the strange masquerader. But they stopped, afraid. And no one dared put out a hand to touch him. The stranger started the stranger started to walk towards the second room. He passed within a few feet of Prospero, who stood still, surprised. And while the dancers moved back from the center of the room, the stranger moved quietly, without being stopped, with a slow and measured step through the blue room to the purple room. Through the purple room to the green room. Through the green room to the yellow. Through this to the white and then to the violet room. Okay, we have more situational irony here, okay? At first, as he spoke, people were rushing to go and stop this masquerader, but they stopped afraid and no one dared to put a hand on this mysterious masquerader. Uh, let's go ahead and add a text box over here to explain that a little bit. You would expect, Uh, these people to follow uh, the orders of their leader. But they're too afraid. Okay. <clears throat> Prospero suddenly and angrily rushed through the six rooms. No one dared to follow him. He held a sharp knife high over his head, ready to strike the stranger. When he was within three or four feet of the strange masquerader, the stranger turned and stood silent, looking firmly into Prospero's eyes. Then with a cry and the knife dropped shining upon the black floor, upon which a minute later Prospero himself fell dead. The dancers then rushed into the black room. The strongest of the men tried to hold the masquerader, whose tall form stood behind the, beside the black clock. But then, 
but when they put their hands upon them, they found inside the grave clothes, no human form, no body, nothing. Now they knew it was the Red Death itself that had come in that night. One by one, the dancers fell, and each died as he fell. And the fire dies, and the clock stopped, and the darkness and decay, and the Red Death ruled forever over all. Okay, so I wanted to finish that story because it was really getting on a roll. Uh, but we do have some things that we need to go back into this um, second to last paragraph and last paragraph um, that we need to highlight. We've first of all got some direct characterization of our guy Prospero here. So um, let's go ahead and highlight Prospero suddenly and angrily rushed through the six rooms. H underline that. And I'm going to add a comment over here. We have direct characterization. Angry. Okay. And we have some important details as well. So go ahead and get our blue highlighter out. Prospero has a sharp knife hot, he's holding over his head, ready to strike the stranger. And before he can do that, he lets out a cry, drops the knife, and falls down dead himself. Oops, I don't want to underline. Darn. There we go. Falls down. And I highlighted it in pink. I didn't mean to. Change that to blue. <clears throat> Oops. There we go. Okay. So when Prospero dies, everyone else at the party is just freaking out. Like this, this strange masquerader doesn't touch him. He simply turns around and looks at him. And that is enough to make him fall down dead. So when that happens, all of the rest of the people rush into the black room. And again, I need to highlight this in blue, not pink, because it's an important detail. Okay, so I'm going to add a text box over here. Everyone is going into that spooky black room. And what happens to them all there? They die. So this black room, the black room, represents death. or the end of life. Okay. That's why no one dared to go into the room before. And I can make this go up a little bit so it fits. Okay. So, again, also down here, they're talking about the black clock. Um, I'm going to go ahead and highlight black clock. So, every time the black clock sounds, everyone stops. This black clock represents something as well. The black clock represents the passing of time, which makes sense as a clock, but like the passing of like time as in life. So as a new year goes by, stopping and reflecting, everything stops for a moment. Okay. Uh, our final important detail that we're highlighting here. Um, when they put their hands on him, they found inside the grave clothes no human form, no body, no nothing. Now they knew it was the Red Death himself that had come that night. One by one, the dancers fell and died as they fell. Okay, so it was actually the Red Death that was there. And there's a reason that the Red Death comes there. 
This story is about how you can't cheat death. You can't avoid it. There's no, there's no magical cure. There's no way to hide from death. When Prospero completely turns his back on his people and hides away, he's trying to prevent, he's trying to present himself from dying. But you can't avoid death. You can't hide from it forever. Okay. And all of these rooms up here that we were talking about before, the different colored rooms, they represent different things as well. Um, there are people that say these rooms represent the different stages of life. Blue is birth and, and when you're small. And the red and black room, like we talked about, is the end of your life or death. So as the colors progress, you get older and older. Purple, you're a child. Green, a teenager. Yellow, a young adult. White, kind of a middle-aged adult. Uh, violet, um, an elderly person. And the black room, you're dead. Uh, so that's why everyone was fine with walking around in rooms one through six, but no one really dared to go into that seventh room. Okay. Um, so that is our the Mask of the Red Death. If you guys have any questions for me about our first or second part of the story, um, shoot me an email. Um, I hope you have a really nice day, guys.